What's up mga kap and welcome to When in Halifax. So maybe right now you already submitted hundreds of resume but unfortunately until now you didn't receive any feedback from the employer. If you are looking for a job, if you're looking for a designated employer here in Atlantic provinces, or maybe you are looking for a job uh, offer from a caregiver pathway, this video is for you. So on this video, I'm going to share to you the importance of resume. I'm going to discuss you the, the highlights or the tips that you need to remember when you are writing the resume. So maybe right now, mga kap, you feel frustrated because after several resumes that you submitted, maybe hundreds of resumes you submitted, you didn't receive any feedback from your employer. So this video will help you to understand why. Why they are not uh, answering my email, why they are not giving me feedback, or why I wasn't able to find a employer here in Canada. So first thing that you need to remember is about the resume. Resume. Resume is the first communication you, for you and the employer. That's your bridge, that's your connection with the employer. So what I want you to remember that give time, invest time when you are writing your resume. Because that resume can change your life. So you need to invest time when you are writing a resume. So when you say invest time, means that you need to customize your resume for every uh, company that you're applying, for every employer. You need to custom every text, every description. You need to match the eligibility or the requirements of the employer to your resume. So if they're looking for, let's say for example, cashier, make sure that the resume on the job description is about cashier. So it should be a specific to the employer. So you need to invest time. So you need to consider this. So first thing that you need to remember, you can write in your resume preferred time to call. So maybe try to consider, try to put, uh, or, or try to consider it, it, will, it should be an office hour here in Canada. So I will suggest you, if you are writing a resume, because of the time difference, you can type preferred time to call for uh, 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. in the, uh, 3 p.m. in Canada. So 3 a.m. in the Philippines, you need to be awake and try to wait for a call or maybe at least anticipate when you go to sleep make sure that you have a loud ringing tone for your phone because you know that you are expecting a call because if you miss that call you will leave, you you will lose your opportunity second is the contact information make sure also use the international code which is in the in Canada it's plus 1 where in the Philippines will be plus 63 so don't just put 0932 or 0920 for Smart or Globe. No, they don't care whatever provider or service you're, you're, you're into. The most important thing is they can reach you. So I will always suggest, I will always suggest to put the international code so that it will be easier for the employer to communicate with you or to contact you. The third thing, that you need to remember when writing in a contact is your email address. Please make sure that you have professional resume uh, email address. So if you have your um, email address 
where in your email it says um, Pogi or Guapo 006 or maybe you say Sexy Hotty Girl 0123 at yahoo.com. Please change this email into an email that is easy to remember. For example, Cap Joey or maybe Joey Moreno at gmail.com or maybe Juan de la Cruz at gmail.com. Please avoid putting zero or your monthly or anniversary date. Make it professional. So maybe put joey at gmail.com. So make sure that it's professional, easy to remember. So that's it for the contact information. The next thing that you need to remember is to put a keywords because the resume here in Canada most especially the big businesses, the big company, are using a software to filter some resume before they go to the HR department. Why is that? So imagine there's a big company, a huge company, where there are several positions, where in every position there is maybe 100, 200, 300 applicants every single day uh, that they receive. So imagine a big company with several positions, let's say 100 positions available in the big company. In every position, there is a 100 people applying on that per position every single day. So do the math. How, uh, the, how big the number or number of resume coming in in their company. So do you think there will be only one, two, or one department can do all those things. No, that's why most of the big company are using a software to filter out the applicants. And this is, I want you to remember, you need to follow the keywordings. The keywords is, the, uh, is one way to, to include you in the list. Because even though you are qualified to that position, even though you have enough experience, if you didn't, uh, you are not part of the waiting list or you are not part of the filtered in um, applicants, you will not have a chance to be interviewed. So what happened is there will be a software, I'll put the link in the description below about the software, but the idea is there will be a software wherein all the resumes that come in to their company will be input in that software. And the software will sort this out according to rank. Number one, ranking. According to the keywords. So who are the people with experience or five years experience? Who are the people with experience on this position in this, in this, in this, in this? So this is what you could filter out. They are filtered, they are sorting out according to the data. That's why it's very important to remember the keywords. And the second thing that I learned through my research that if you are applying for a big company that this, we're in this, there's a possibility that they're using a software, I will suggest to use the Microsoft Word file type file. So if you are sending a resume to a big company, make sure that you are sending a Microsoft Office type file or docs, documents. The reason for that is the software that you're using. You don't know what kind of software they're using. You don't know what type, what, uh, what kind of software are reading, but most or majority of the software are reading through the Microsoft Office. So if the company is a big company, make sure that you are sending your resume in docs file okay so what if it's a small uh, small business so the common question is is it okay to submit a um, um is it okay to submit a resume that is in pdf or, or microsoft office based on my research the pdf can be used for a small businesses pizza house a restaurant so but if it's a big company use the microsoft office all right, so we, I've already discussed the importance of resume. I already discussed about the contact information, the high, uh, things that you need to remember with contact information. And I already discussed about the keyword. And the last thing is, uh, the last tip is when you are sending a resume, 
make sure that it's only one page. You don't need to put much information. Uh, there's a saying that less is more. So when you type your less, be concise, direct to the point, write only important things. Don't include any information that are not relevant to the position. For example, if you're applying for a cashier and you're a best player in your liga or you're in your basketball team in your, in your home county, you don't need to put the basketball experience because you're applying for a cashier. So these are the sample, the exaggerated examples that I want you to remember is don't put any information that are not relevant to the, to the position that you're applying. And make sure also that you customize the resume according to the position requirements to apply. So make sure that you are showing to the employer that you are qualified, you have the experience, you have this and this and this. So make sure that only one, uh, one page. One page, the maximum is two, but we don't recommend two pages. Most especially, again, we'll go back to the system. We will go back to the filter. We'll go back. We will go back to um, a small scale business. If it's a small scale business, business, if it's owned by a family business, for example, and there's only one person checking your resume, they will never read your ten pages resume, but rather they will just read the first page. Okay. So for me, my advice for you when you are writing a resume, make sure that the resume that you're writing are one page. And always search in Google the best way to write a Canadian format resume. Always follow the Canadian format. Some, some of our friends, shout out to Jeremy Mendoza. I have a live interview with Jeremy Mendoza wherein he shared his experience when writing a resume and he says I didn't follow the Canadian format however however what I did is I write all the information that is needed by my employer so it means that if the employer is looking for a cashier he re already put all the possible questions that the employer might ask so he already put all the questions, all the, the, uh, the possible answers to the possible questions of the employer. So everything are detailed. So if you want to watch the live interview with Jeremy and be inspired, because Jeremy is one of the AIPP successful applicants. So if you are not Filipino, the, this live streaming are in Tagalog, but I'll try to make a subtitle. Sub but if you're Filipino, I encourage you, I encourage you to watch the live interview with Jeremy. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's it, mga cop. And I hope I'm able to answer some questions and hopefully to see you again in our next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye, cop.